I think marlin lures are really interesting lures, both from the standpoint of what they do in the water and uh, how they're fished, plus the construction techniques are, are quite interesting as well. They consist of a head with a, an insert inside, and these heads can be either long and narrow, they can be real fat, they can be somewhat blunt. The higher speed that's required, usually the longer, more aerodynamic head shape. Head shapes that are more blunt in the front or, more, or shorter as well, tend to move better at slower speeds. The way they're constructed is a dual mold process, and I just happen to be in the middle of doing it right now, and I'll show you how very, very quickly. I've pre-made a mold out of a small head using a, a cup and RTV2. I'm not going to take time to do it now, but if you want to have complete instructions, just go to the makelure.com website. The next thing I have to do is make a, I'm going to make a gang mold as long as I'm going to do it. And I've all, I'm going to start out with my models, or my masters as they're called, with three different good proven head shapes. I've got a hot melt glue gun here, and I'm just going to put a little hot glue in the bottom of each one of them. The head shape, plus the weight of these marlin lures, are designed so that they'll come up to the surface, grab a whole bunch of air, dive back down, leaving a trail of bubbles behind them, who knows, maybe a hundred feet long. It serves as a huge attractor for a predator fish like a marlin to come in and see what's going on. Hopefully he bites it. If the marlin doesn't bite and just follows that smoke trail, often it's effective to accelerate it, pop it, twitch it, just like you might with any other fish. There's two things going on here, attracting and triggering. The smoke trail or line of bubbles is what attracts the attention, but oftentimes making the lure appear as though it's reacting to the predator is what gets the bite. It's been overnight and the mold is set up. And now after I re remove the masters, I'll be able to pour one. What I think is cool about the technique is that it allows for so much variability. You've got length, diameter, shape here, plus the insert technique allows for controlling the specific gravity and the balance as well. First thing, pour an insert. I've already dusted a pre-made mold that I made from a head. Now all I have to do, mix up a little bit of super plastic. It makes the pearl turn kind of a silver, and that's uh, what I'm looking for. Well, we're waiting for the super plastic to set up, which is just maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm gonna make some yellow eyeballs here just by painting these clear ones with a paint pen. There we go. Now doesn't that look good? Not any paint at all. I've got a nice dark blue back, silver sides, just with the dust. And as you can see, I've used this mold for other things. There's a telltale hook hanger that I use this head for a jig mold. After we've pulled this out, um, I don't have to clean it up much, but I said I wanted big eyes in it, so I'm taking a special type of a bit. That's called a Forschner bit. It's made to drill a nice, round, flat-bottomed hole. And as you can see, it makes a nice, nice little hole. Well, I've cleaned off the flash, that's the excess from the other mold, and glued a, my eyes in. I've got a pin through it. And now I'm going to stick it in our mold and pour some clear resin around it. It's pretty important to stir the resin thoroughly and get it all scraped off the edges of the cup. I've got a cup with smooth edges just for that reason. Now I'm getting a lot of air bubbles in this and that's why I'm going to need this special device. Okay, I've got it all mixed up. Now I'm just going to pour it into the mold. And now, my special device. This is called a pressure pot, and that's going to collapse all of these bubbles so it's absolutely crystal clear. And I'm going to plug this into my air compressor. 
how that's going to set up. I'll give it about a half an hour. There it is. As you can see, this technique makes an absolutely beautiful head with very little muss or fuss. And as any marlin fisherman would know, this one I poured upside down because they really run this way for marlin. But it doesn't take much imagination to say, hmm, how do I go beyond marlin with this? I could change the head shape and make it wander or vibrate. I could change the, uh, the balance. And instead of putting a skirt on it like a marlin guy, maybe I could put a skirt and a soft plastic tail. Maybe it's got a flip-flop on it. Maybe it's got a wiggler. Maybe I put both. Depending on balance and weight, we can make this thing do almost anything from pop on the surface to run deep underneath the surface.